when you are doing a standardized recipe, in order for that recipe to turn out consistently and accurately every time, you have to have standardized weight. Measuring by volume, which is how most traditional recipes in the United States are outlined, is essentially how much can you put in a cup. And for something like flour, that is not always very accurate. In my classroom, I often have a group of students, about four, they come up and they measure a cup of flour. And I don't tell them how to do it. And essentially, the measurements are not real accurate. They don't really match. Not very many people know and understand how to properly measure by volume. I did include in this unit some information on measuring accurately by volume. But if you're going to be baking, if you're going to be working on a professional scale, most often using digital scale and weight is going to be the more common way that you will do your measurements for accuracy. So a digital scale is super easy to use. Um, when you have a digital scale, essentially you put it out and you put a vessel that you're going to put your ingredients into on top of the scale. When you hit the zero button, the zero is also called the Terry button. The button for Terry or to zero is going to take it back to zero regardless of what's sitting on top. So if you put a bowl on there and you hit zero, now you're only measuring what goes in the bowl. So a lot of times you would measure your first ingredient, maybe flour hit the zero button again. Now you, you're ready to add your second ingredient. Hit the zero button again. And now what you are doing is you're only measuring the ingredient in which you are adding. So it's a really cool feature of the digital scale. Uh, you, if you're going to do it that way, you do have to make sure that you trust your equipment, that your equipment isn't gonna shut off because now you have a bunch of things that are measured into a bowl um, and it's, it's a lot more difficult once you're in the middle of that process to start again. Uh, and so with my students, as they're learning with the digital scale, what I recommend doing is just measuring your ingredient into the bowl and then adding that to a side bowl. And then you just measure your next ingredient, and then you add them, and your next ingredient, and then you put them together uh, if they're going together instead of all into one bowl. But if you're really common, if you're if you're really used to using that digital scale, then building it in one bowl, like this slide says, is a good is a good method. So a couple of tips. Let me move my picture around. A couple of tips to really remember. Uh, when you're doing the digital scale is to make sure your scale is calibrated and that it's accurate. And they sell weights that are um, used in professional kitchen that are calibrated weights that you can test with. Uh, you want to weigh when possible. It's just more accurate than volume. And so, and it's easy. It's just, it, to me, I find it a lot easier to, to go by weight. Make sure that you are using that, that zero, that Terry button so that you're not counting the vessel that you're measuring in uh, and that you utilize uh, that. Also make sure it's important to sanitize and, and have methods to keep cross-contamination away. So you are dealing with food and you might be dealing with some TCS foods that could grow and harbor bacteria. And often the some, diff, some of the scales have buttons that, you know, it's like it's a button so things can get down in between the button. The best way that we found was to sanitize your station in your area, put your scale down and cover the entire thing with saran wrap. That way, as you touch the buttons, there's that protective barrier there and you don't have food that's gonna drip down or, or fall down and get down in the cracks and crevices and it'll make your scale last a lot longer. There are uh, a lot of scales features that even within the last like year or two, uh, in 2021 now, that are, are really a, a, a good and feasible option. A lot of people use a digital scale for weight loss and for portioning out their food so that they know that they're getting exactly that same, that right amount of food. So because of that, they're super inexpensive. They're less than 20 bucks. 
I ordered a really awesome one off of Amazon recently that just came out. It's waterproof. The buttons are all flat and there's tempered glass in there. And so you don't have food falling down in the crack of the button. Um, the one that I got also recharges by USB and the charge lasts for a long time instead of using batteries, which is awesome. Um, they're a lot more flat and, and the buttons don't stick out. And so you don't have as much cross contamination. And I have seen some that offer a wave your hand over the Terry button. Uh, a William Sonoma ad was advertising that one. I worry about the touchless Terry. Like what if I accidentally brush over it and I've got stuff in a bowl, uh, particularly if I'm building in a bowl and now all of a sudden I didn't mean to and I waved my hand and now it's all back to zero. So I don't know about that one. I, I'm, I'll am i stick with the, uh, I want to touch it and make sure I hit the button, Terry. There's a video here from America's Test Kitchen on better and best digital scales. It's linked into the PowerPoint that is included here. They really talk about some features to look for as far as a digital scale goes. But um, the main thing is to make sure that the buttons are super available and they're clean and they're clear, that you can keep it clean and clear, that it's easy to use, uh, that you can go between grams and pounds really easily uh, and that that button is, is easy and acceptable. So the main thing is just a, when you're doing a, a restaurant, and you're, you're working in scale, when you start looking at what the difference between just a tiny little amount, if one serving costs eight cents more than planned because you have just a, a little bit of extra food or your portion size is a little bit too big or you have an ingredient that's just a little bit extra, the total cost for the day, if you made 300 uh, of those in a day, would be 24 bucks. And so if it's something little, macaroni and cheese, you could very easily serve 300 servings of macaroni and cheese in a day. If your portion was just about eight cents over, because uh, that's a pretty expensive item, then that's a lot of money for the day. For the week, divide by five, that's 120 bucks for the week. Put that on 20 days, so you're not even looking at a restaurant open seven days a week. That's quite a bit, and then now we're looking at a lot more. So, you know, you're, you're looking at a lot of money that just a tiny little bit on each serving can make a difference. So when you get into food costs, that that's a big deal. Um, looking at a little bit about with the food costs, I have a whole section of this unit that is divided out by this, but I want to make sure that you really understand this language. So AP is as purchased, EP is the edible portion, and AS is as served. So you might have a food item that you purchase that has skin or fat on it. The edible portion is after you have trimmed that off. The as served is after you have cooked that. So something like um, a big brisket that you're going to trim fat off of uh, and you're going to cook. So you're going to have some loss there. Uh, those would have different um different acronyms that would that you would see. So when you're looking at loss and production, um, these are your, your standards here. So the standard yield is the actual yield if it's once, that's what you actually are able to serve. So standard yield is like servable yield.